Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the power of paying attention and how it shaped my life and the organization that I've built. Um, and it's a bit ironic because growing up when I was a little kid, uh, I was the least, um, I was the kid that was the least likely to be paying attention at any point in the school day. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I had a really hard time sitting still. Uh, I liked to talk to my friends. I was really not interested in what I was learning in school at all. And it took a while for my teachers to realize it, but it was because I was already performing outside of kindergarten. As a matter of fact, my school wanted to put me in third grade. Um, it was actually because of my mom that I ended up doing before school and after school work and spent half of my day in third grade. I was kind of this double agent where I was going between kindergarten and third grade and I felt really cool. Um, because my mom was worried that I would stay, I wouldn't stay a kid if I didn't have the opportunity to be around my peers. Um, I spent most of my education like this. And what I found that even though I was learning and I loved what I was learning and I loved school, my favorite times of the school day was gym and recess. Because that's really where I could just play. And I could be young, just like all of the other kids, that I didn't really fit in with. And I still had issues paying attention in school. School was always something that I struggled with. Um, but it wasn't until college that I, I learned why. Um, when I got into middle school and then I went into high school, I started to work more with kids. I believed so much that kids have a chance to play, that I volunteered in after school programs. I helped foster better recess so that kids would be able to, to play. I don't know about you guys or how much you know about um, the traditional public school system now. But gym and recess is pretty much non-existent as compared to when I was a kid. Six schools in the, or sorry, six states in the country require a gym to be a part of school. Recess on average is about 15 minutes a day. And in urban environments where schools are so big and land is so small, it's really hard to get kids outside and give them a chance to run around. And so when I started to think about the kids that I was working with and comparing it to the life that I had when I was little, I started to think that maybe the problem wasn't that we couldn't all pay attention. I think the problem was nobody ever really taught us how and gave us an opportunity to be able to learn how to pay attention, to be a bit more self-aware, to spend more time working with our peers, and to understand how we can sit and listen and absorb the content that's coming our way and make the most of it. So when I was working with kids and I was in college, I also started to practice yoga. And yoga was something I never thought that somebody like me could do. I was probably the most awkward kid growing up. I was really bad at sports. Um, I wasn't very flexible, so I didn't think that yoga would be something for me, but it was the first time when I got on the mat that I was able to actually start listening to myself. And starting to realize that there's strength in my body and strength in my mind, and it wasn't as different as I thought I was. Um, and so when I was in college, yoga was where I, I kind of found myself, and I came back to myself, and I made sure that who I was matched who I was growing into. Um, at the same time, I was working in this after-school program, the school in the Lower East Side. They were looking for ways to get their kids moving. This was a school that didn't have a comprehensive gym program. They had a playground outside, but it wasn't the safest place for kids to go. And I thought that maybe yoga would get, be a good thing for them, too. Yoga is the blend of movement and mindfulness. It's the activity and stillness. It's great for a place where kids aren't gonna, don't have a space to move because it doesn't need that much space. I could be doing yoga in this little circle right here and have plenty of space to do it. It's also a really easy way and a really safe way to just be quiet, to close your eyes, to take a couple of deep breaths. And between the balance of those, you can really foster self-awareness and confidence. And so we started this yoga program um, once a week. It was Thursdays after school. I was working with third and fourth graders. And instead of walking in there and acting like I was some expert in yoga, I think I'd been practicing maybe for six months. I had no idea what I was doing. But I thought that that was the best way to start doing yoga with these kids, because I came at it as a student would. And a student that was a lot like them. Yeah, I was a little bit older, but I knew what they were going through. We were all in this place where we were just really tired and very stressed and didn't know how to pay attention and sick of people telling us all the time, just shush. Um, and so we started to use yoga as a tool to be able to check in, figure out how we feel. We started doing yoga poses not to learn yoga poses, but to feel like superheroes, right? To learn how to balance everything that was happening in our day. And we found a lot there. We don't have a space a lot of times in school where it's okay to fall, where it's okay to fail. You know, learning is a practice, yoga is a practice, and you're able to do a lot here and carry it into other parts of the school day without failing. It's also a really easy way just to check in. Ask yourself how you're feeling. 
How are you doing? What do you need right now? I think it's really powerful when a child can say, I need to take a couple of deep breaths. I'm really anxious. I don't like talking in front of people. I should stand to the side and take a couple of breaths and slow down. That's a hard thing to learn. When we started working with these kids, it became to the point that other kids and other teachers in the school joined us after school because they wanted to understand what this common denominator was because these kids were coming to us after school but then going to school the next day more eager to learn. Instead of bullying kids in the lunchroom, they were standing up for them. They were helping to mediate issues that were happening in the classroom. So we started to realize that we were onto something and started to work with other schools. And not only did we, ever, we start working with other schools, we started to work with teachers, specifically. I was some kid that liked yoga, that was a student, and I knew that what we were doing was working, but I thought about the teachers that I had grown to respect and love so dearly in the school, who really wanted a teacher to be there more often, a yoga teacher to be there more often, and I thought, you are far more empowered to do this work. You just need the tools to do it. So instead of me teaching in schools, I started to teach more teachers. Um, I was hosting yoga trainings before school, after school, on weekends. I was working in tech at this time, so I had a full-time job. I had graduated from college. And we were able to start spreading this outwards to about 15 schools in New York City until as I was working and <laughs> building apps and all these other amazing platforms for big brands, I thought, how cool would it be if we just put all this online? Then we're not limited to the time that I'm working my nine to five to, to do this, you know, here and there. Teachers don't have to take their time off to be able to learn this. Let's build an online platform where teachers have come together and start learning how to integrate movement and mindfulness into the classroom so everybody has a greater opportunity to pay attention. And so that, that, that's what we've been doing. Yoga Foster, like she said before, is working with about 500 teachers across the country looking to expand a lot more. And when I try to explain about the impact that this has in the classroom, it's a little bit difficult to understand because a lot of us think we should just also be learning all the time. If kids aren't getting good grades, they should just be learning more. That we should just always be constantly getting kids to be thinking about school all the time. Well, we know that might not be quite as effective. And so the way I like to explain it is if you think about a kid doing yoga for about an hour a week, integrated here and there throughout the day, and maybe going to an after school program with their teacher, as if we're adding weeks to the school year because we're increasing the effectiveness of the existing programming by helping kids pay attention. Meaning that they feel more focused as they're learning. They feel more confident before they take a test. They feel more confident in their body, so even if they don't have that much gym, there's a higher aptitude that they'll participate because they know what their body is capable of, where they might not have before. And any free time that they have with other students is more positive because they're speaking to each other in a different language when we're on the mat. They have an opportunity to play with each other that they might not have had before. Uh, so it's really incredible that the work that it can do. Um, but I think the work that we're doing is amazing and I'm really excited about it, but what makes me most excited is to think about where these kids could be. Because there's a saying that in order for us to be heard, we have to know how to listen. And I think ever, even now, it's even harder for people like me that grew up the way that I did and go to the schools that I went to, to be able to succeed in life once they leave the educational environment. They're less likely to be seen as talented and gifted. They're less likely to be believed that they can achieve greater and they might not have as much attention as they need when they go into high school. They're less likely to get into fields that I worked in, working in technology, being a founder, a female founder of color. And so what they need to do is have the opportunity to go home and remind themselves that they can become what they deserve to be and not what other people think that they can achieve. If we all have the tools to pay attention, we have the power to change the world because we'll remind ourselves all the time that that lies within us. And I can't wait to see these kids come up and be the change that we need so desperately in here in the US and around the world. And I hope by then that grown-ups have also learned how to listen too. Thank you. <laughs>